dear newly ordained priests, congratulations. After many long years of seminary, taking tests, enduring formators, completing CPEs, and saying, oh, I'm sorry, I'm not a priest, I'm just a seminarian, about a thousand times, the wait is finally over. You are a priest forever in the line of Melchizedek of old. God has blessed you with the third most amazing gift you will ever receive in this life, just behind life itself and your baptism. I pray that you will now be a gift to the world, which is actually what I want to talk to you about. Being a priest is not an easy life. I'm sure you're well aware of this. You've been preparing for this for most of your adult life, but it's still important to say. Too many guys enter this life with high hopes and big dreams, only to get worn down and burned out in just a few years. It's sad to see, and even more sad to see, what an unhealthy priest can inflict on the people of God. You don't need this, and the church most certainly does not need this. Which is why I'd like to offer a few bits of advice, from one recently ordained priest to another. Things that I've learned over the past four years that I think every priest should live by. I am by no means an expert, but hey, neither are you, so shut up and respect your elders. Just kidding. Hope this helps. Remember that you are a priest, not a CEO. As leaders in the Catholic Church, we priests can have a considerable impact on the physical lives of the people around us. Many churches are multi-million dollar operations that do incredible good for the world. We feed the hungry, house the homeless, clothe the naked, and so on. This naturally requires that we spend some time in finance council meetings, attending fundraising events, maintaining buildings, concerning ourselves with liabilities, and managing staff members. All of that is good and important, so make sure you have good people around you and you know how to read a spreadsheet but then get back to the mission that's been entrusted to you, being a priest. As important as all of those things might be in supporting the mission, they're not the mission itself. Your role, first and foremost, is to be a priestly shepherd of God's flock. It's not about growing the congregation or increasing the collection. We are not in the business of building an empire. It's about helping people recognize and respond to the work of God in their lives. Money and buildings and staff members may help you do this, but they cannot replace your own witness of striving for holiness, of growing in virtue, of living with humility, of being a man of prayer and love. No matter what you do or where you're assigned, remember that your first duty is to imitate Christ. And what did Christ do for his people? He served them. The way the church is organized, the pastor really is above everything in the local parish. At the end of the day, Father is in charge. But that doesn't mean that the church is yours. It doesn't mean you get to fashion it however you like and exclude those who don't share the same vision as you. As much as it may feel like you're a king at times, always remember that your role is that of servant. Servant of the wider church, so don't go off creating some weird rituals or making the liturgy match whatever you wish it would be. Do the red and say the black, as they say. But servant of your parishioners as well. As important as you may be at any given moment as priest or pastor, remember that at some point, you will be transferred. At some point, you are going to leave, but the people are going to stay. The church belongs to the people of God. They just let you lead it for a while. For this reason, I say lead, don't dictate. Come in with a strong vision. Have big ideas. Share the fruit of your training in holy life by helping people see what they don't even know they don't know. That's great. But the best leaders don't give orders and they're not always at the front of the line. Sometimes the best leaders are the ones who are able to identify the most equipped people around them and then get out of their way. Sometimes the best leaders are the ones whose actions of humility, meekness, charity, and forgiveness speak much louder than their words. We as a church have been through some crazy ups and downs over the years with major generational shifts and a lot of damage done by our predecessors. You may walk into a situation where the liturgy and mission of the church barely resemble your understanding of Catholicism. I get that, and direct, swift action might need to be taken, but it can never be done without listening first. Never outside of patience and proper catechesis, and never for the sake of fitting your sensibilities alone. With every decision that you make, never forget that the people will remain in the church long after you've been transferred. If changes need to be made, Make sure that they're done in a way that will have a lasting, positive impact on the people you serve and not simply done to fit what you want. Speaking of leaving, I think it's incredibly important that you do this on a regular basis long before you're transferred. Take a day off. It may sound like an obvious piece of advice. Who doesn't know this? And frankly, who am I the one to give this advice? But it is the one thing that I need to be reminded of most in my priestly life, so I figured I'd share it with you. The obvious part of this is for your own mental health. 
As a priest, you will have more piled on you than you can possibly imagine right now. Work, tragedies, conflict, you name it, you got it. It's not just important, it's necessary to get away on a regular basis, to recharge, to let yourself relax. Too many guys burn out way too young. You don't want to be that guy. But there's something even more important about this, I think, that people don't talk about as much. And it's the effect that this can have on your entire approach to ministry. You need to take a day off to remind yourself that the church doesn't need you to survive. You're important, don't get me wrong, but you're not so indispensable that the church ceases to run when you're not around. The staff know how to do their jobs. The parish office is not gonna catch fire when you're not there. In more than just a few cases, I have seen priests turn into nervous wrecks, believing that everything relies on them. They never take a day off for fear of what might happen. They check their email 50 times a night. They micromanage the heck out of the people around them, getting the worst out of their employees. Relax, get away. As special and as important as you are, remember that even Jesus took some time away. The people were all looking for him with all their needs, and still he took time to be alone, to pray, to let the disciples take their crack at it. If Jesus can take some time off, you can. Which is the perfect opportunity for you to find a hobby and some non-religious friends. I get it. For the first time in your life, you're able to celebrate Mass and hear confessions. People are looking to you with a twinkle in their eye, and it feels really great to be called Father. This is huge, and it's probably hard to imagine doing anything else right now. But listen, because this is difficult. You are more than just a priest. It may seem like the most defining aspect of your life right now, and that makes sense, but remember, that you are first and foremost a baptized Christian. As St. Augustine famously said, for you I am a bishop, but with you I am a Christian. If all you do are priestly things, if the only people that you surround yourself with are people that call you father, you are going to live a severely twisted life. I'm not suggesting that you cease to be a priest or neglect your responsibilities, hear me out. I'm saying that you need to remember that you don't magically cease being the person you were before you were ordained. You still have interests and hobbies, friends and family members. It is so critically important that you find a place for yourself where you don't have to be the spiritual leader for people around you, where people can call you by your first name and you can just be you. Because really, you are still just you. You've had oil rubbed on your hands, a permanent character marked on your soul, sure. But in terms of who you are before God, in terms of your desperate need for God's help in your life, nothing has changed. You are no closer to receiving salvation now that you are a priest than when you were before. Lord knows that being a priest doesn't make you a holy person or automatically get you into heaven. You may be afforded some special graces now, sure, but they are only there to help you fulfill your added responsibilities. Your fundamental goal in life, to follow Christ on the way of salvation, hasn't changed one bit. As the church exalts you, as the people of God exalt you, the most important thing that you can do for your priesthood and your salvation is to humble yourself before Christ. Next to him and what he can do for the world, you are absolutely nothing. The most important thing that I can tell you and where I will leave this letter is this. You are not a savior, you are someone who needs saving. Just like every penitent you will meet in the confessional, just like every dying person you anoint in a hospital, just like every poor person you feed on the street. We may be ordained into the priesthood of Christ, which affords us some special opportunities to participate in Christ's work, yes, but we are not Christ himself. There are certain things that we can do as priests that no one else can do, and I do not want to diminish this. We are blessed with so many wonderful and unfathomable graces to help our people on the way to salvation. I never want you to think that you're just an ordinary person with ordinary responsibilities. But I also don't want you to think that the salvation of the world is up to you. In the grand scheme of things, God is in control and we can do nothing. It should not depress us or cause us to take our responsibilities any less seriously, but rather to ground us into who we really are and how we are to carry out these responsibilities. When we remember that we are also sinners in need of saving, we show much more mercy to penitents. When we remember that we will also die one day, we will treat the sick with much greater compassion. When we realize that all we have is gift, we are much more likely to share with the person on the street. When we remember that it's Christ's church that we serve, that the Holy Spirit has everything under control, 
we remember that it's not up to us to solve every problem, to save every lost cause, to win every battle. Our role is simply to show up and witness to the saving power of God. My brother priests, may your life be a witness to the saving power of God. May every Mass you celebrate, every confession you hear, every homily you preach, and every meeting you lead bear witness to what Christ has done in the world and what he is continuing to accomplish in you. Never forget who you are and who you serve, and you're going to do great things for Christ's Church. God bless. Thank you.